Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's Bible lesson. I'm glad you are joining me today. We are continuing to talk about what it means to show compassion to ourselves. Now, what you might be thinking is, Ms. Ashley, taking care of ourselves and showing compassion to ourselves feels a little selfish. Why should we be taking care of ourselves when our family, our friends, our neighbors, the world around us needs us to show compassion to them? And what I would say is that it's important to take care of yourself first because just like you can't pour water out of an empty cup, you can't pour out love if you don't have any in your heart and you're not taking care of yourself. So what we're going to do today is we're going to first read our remember verse because it's part of today's story. And then we're going to hear a story about how Jesus tells his followers that we're supposed to love ourselves. And then if we have time after that, I have another story about Jesus welcoming us into his community and how that helps us see that we should take care of ourselves because Jesus is welcoming us and asks us to do so. So if you do not already have your Bible in your lap, run and go get it and I will be here when you get back. All right, so you got your Bibles. We are going to open to our remember verse first and we are going to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament. It is the, oh, excuse me. There we go. It is the fifth book. So we've got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And we're going to Deuteronomy chapter six. And when we're looking in our Bibles, I bet you remember the big numbers in my Bible, they're green, are the chapters and the little numbers are the verses. So you're going to chapter six, verse four. And before, we're not going to read this first part because we're going to see if we can remember our memory verse in our heads. All right, so it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your mind and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. Now that we've said it together, I'm going to continue reading in verse 6. So the Bible says, the commandments I give you today must be on your hearts. So the commandment to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, it must be on your heart. Make sure your children learn them. Talk about them when you are at home. Talk about them when you walk along the road. Speak about them when you go to bed and speak about them when you get up. Write them down and tie them on your hands as a reminder. Also tie them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses. Also write them on your gates. So the word of the Lord gives us all these places we're supposed to remember his word and write them down and put them. And I wonder why is that important? Why is it important to have it in all these different places? You came up with an idea? So I think it's important because God's word is supposed to be written in our hearts. And if it's all around us, it's always going to remind us and we can't forget what God is asking us to do. So now that we've read our memory verse and we've heard about why it's important to have it all around us, we are going to flip to the story for today. We are going to be in the book of Mark. Mark is one of the gospels in the New Testament that tells us about Jesus's life, his ministry, and the words we have recorded. Mark is the second of the four gospels. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're going to go to Mark. We're going to Mark chapter 12. If you need a little bit of time finding it, just press pause and I'll be here when you're ready. Okay, great. So you found Mark chapter 12, and we are going to be in verse 28 today. And the header in my Bible says the most important commandment. So I'm going to start reading in, in verse 29. No, excuse me, verse 28. It says, one of the teachers of the law came and heard the Sadducees arguing. He noticed that Jesus had given the Sadducees a good answer. So he asked him, which is the most important of all the commandments? So we heard a commandment a second ago in the book of Deuteronomy. But also remember that Moses, many years before Jesus was born, went up the mountain and God gave him the Ten Commandments. And do you remember what the Ten Commandments are? Do you remember what any of them are? Some of them were honor your mother and father, honor the Sabbath, don't kill, don't steal, there's only one God. And those were all really important. So this man is asking Jesus, which of these 10 in the commandments you give us are the most important? I wonder, which one do you think he is going to say is most important? He says in verse 29, 
Jesus is going to answer. It says, Jesus answered, here is the most important one. Moses said, Israel, listen to me. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind and with all your strength. That's what we just read a minute ago. And here is the second one. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no commandment more important than these. Did you hear that? He said his second, the most important command, the second one, is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The man replied and said, you've spoken well, teacher. You're right in saying that God is one. There's no other God but him. To love God with all your heart and mind and strength is very important. So is loving your neighbor as yourself. So I wonder why Jesus includes taking care of yourself as one of his verses, as one of his most important commands. What do we learn about how Jesus wants us to live by hearing that? What does it mean to love your neighbor as you love yourself? These are all important questions that we might not all have answers for, but it's important to discover them and wrestle with them and come up with our own ideas. I'm not going to give you any answers today because I want you to think about them and talk about them with your family and your siblings and your grandparents, whoever you want to ask and see what they think it means to love your neighbor as you love yourself. I'm going to read one last story to you today. It's about Jesus welcoming the children. Because I think it's important when we talk about loving ourselves to remember that Jesus welcomes, welcomes us into relationship with him. He's not telling us to love ourselves and we don't have anyone to be a part of it. He's asking, inviting us into a relationship with him where he will love us and he'll help take care of us so then we can turn and love others. So I'm going to read our story from the Jesus Storybook Bible today. Many of you have probably seen this before and you might have even heard this story before, I think. We talked about it this spring as we were getting ready for Easter. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera around so you can read it with me. The Friend of Little Children. Jesus' friends were arguing. Who was the most important helper in God's kingdom? They wanted to know. I am, James said. No, you're not, said Peter. I am. Nonsense, Matthew said. I'm the cleverest. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Yes, no, am too. The silliness went on and on like that for some time. You see, Jesus' friends had started thinking they had to do something to make themselves special to Jesus. And if they were the cleverest or the nicest or something, Jesus would like them the best. But they had forgotten something, something God had been teaching his people all through the years, that no matter how clever you are or how good you are or how rich you are or how nice you are or how important you are, None of it makes any difference because God's love is a gift. And as anyone will tell you, the whole thing about a gift is it's free. All you have to do is reach out your hands and take it. So while Jesus's friends are arguing, some people who knew all about getting gifts, in fact, you might say they were gift experts, had come to see Jesus. Who were they? They were little children. Jesus' helpers tried to send them away. Jesus doesn't have time for you, they said. He's too tired. But they were wrong. Jesus always had time for children. Don't ever send them away, Jesus said. Bring the little ones to me. Now, if you had been there, what do you think? Would you have had to line up quietly to see Jesus? Do you think Jesus would have asked you how good you'd been before he'd give you a hug? Would you have had to be on your best behavior and get dressed up? And not speak until you've been spoken to? Or would you have done just what these children did? Run straight up to Jesus and let him pick you up in his arms and swing you and kiss you and hug you and then sit you on his lap and listen to your stories and your chats. You see, children love Jesus and they knew they didn't need to do anything special for Jesus to love them. All they needed to do was to run into his arms and so that's just what they did. Well, after all the laughing and games, Jesus turned to his helpers and said, No matter how big you grow, never grow up so much that you lose your child's heart. Full trust in God. Be like these children. They are the most important in my kingdom.